In this Debaco University video, I'm going to cover flood and drain, or some people call it the ebb and flow irrigation method, and relate it to cannabis production. Whether you call it flood and drain, or you call it ebb and flow, let's get into this method of irrigation. So first off, the basics of this general method of irrigation is that plants are typically uh, grown in inert substrate, that is within a container located in a growing tray where nutrient containing water is pumped from the reservoir to the growing tray. We kind of see that evident right here in this very simple homeowner's type setup. This essentially will flood the tray, allowing the substrate and roots to absorb some of the nutrient solution before the water slowly drains back into the reservoir. This process uh, also aids in the aeration of the root zone, another benefit of this system. Now, why do growers like this system in general? Well, it's uh, easy to automate, and it's also easy to set up and really requires minimal parts and equipment. The system is also scalable, meaning it can be used for if you're only growing one plant, if you're growing hundreds, or if you're growing thousands or more than that of plants, uh, it can be applied to that situation as we see in the images presented here. Now, there's no perfect system, so there are some drawbacks to the system. And a disadvantage of the system, as uh, any other hydroponic systems in general, is that if something goes wrong, even for a short period of time, the entire crop could be a loss, simply because they're all dependent on that exact same water source. This requires growers to carefully monitor. Um, the process is essential. This includes nutrient concentrations as well as pH values. Typical nutrient solutions are changed every 7 to 10 days or so, and the system should be cleaned between grow cycles or at any point that it's noticing that it's justified or warranted uh, looking at the plants, looking at the trays, and also the reservoirs. Now, what equipment do you need if you're thinking about employing this type of system? Well, a reservoir, ideally with a lid, a growing tray to support the plants and hold the uh, flooding cycle, tubing uh, with required fittings to attach everything, a water pump that's sized appropriately for the size of the tray, a timer, and plants that are potted in an inert growing substrate that will allow for absorption of that nutrient solution. So a lot of times they're sold as kits, which is great, and this gives you just one example of a basic kind of components looking at the flood and drain system. Now what about the frequency and duration, some of the specifics? Well, how to best run your setup will depend on a few factors. Some of those factors include the age or size of your plants, the substrate that the plants are growing in, and general growing environment and conditions, temperature and humidity. So keep in mind the size and age, the older plants, uh, larger plants are going to typically require more water. The substrate the plants are growing in, how receptive is that substrate to water? Is it holding water for an extended period of time? Things to be in consideration. And also the general growing environment. Is it hot? Is it humid? Are you able to monitor those conditions? Hopefully you're monitoring those and able to keep those in a good range. But if not, if you have increased amounts of temperature, your frequency of irrigation might be um, a little bit higher. However, for a starting point, frequency should be two irrigation events per day during a light cycle. In a duration, a 30-minute flood cycle would be a good starting point. Now, this might be a little heavy, so you can always go a little bit lighter, but it's just one way to kind of get a feel for the system. 30 minutes allows you a good time to check to make sure everything's working, uh, and you can kind of work it back uh, down from there as you see fit, as you monitor your plants so that you dial in the frequency and duration that best matches your conditions.